It's the Libby O Show. Come on in, everybody. How did she do it? Do it. Emily West, welcome to the Libby O Show. How are you? I am so happy to be here with you. This is very cool and exciting that we get to chat with each other. Oh, well, I'm so glad that you're here. And I love your strobe lights. Thank you so much. I'm actually going to stop that because that's what's giving me high anxiety right now. (laughs) I just, I just, the strobe lights are on. Now they're off. Now we can begin. I love it though. Well, welcome. Um, How has quarantine been for you? Like what? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's been much like a Netflix movie, which I've been doing lots of binging, you know, on. And I I basically, I film my life according to what Netflix is doing. So it's been much like a Netflix movie. I can't believe that we're all in our homes. It's also kind of like a freshly fallen snow. Everyone's very quiet. And, you know, you can hear the birds, which by the way, I have just been devastatingly gorgeous. And if you hear any kind of traffic, it's, it sounds just like white noise and everybody's just really nice to each other from far away on the street. And it's just this eerie, but beautiful Truman show. And I, I don't know, I think we're learning a lot of lessons and we don't even know it. Exactly. You know? What's something that you've learned personally about yourself um, as a creative during this time? Would you say? Um, that's a, such a great question. Um, I feel like, there's kind of a part of me that is struggling with FOMO, um, knowing that I can use this incredible opportunity to create with, um, I feel like confusion and questions, um, you know, in the moment of not really being able to have the answer, we're kind of having, you can't Google this thing that's going around and it's making everybody question what if this happens to me. And so you're thinking not only selfishly for you, you're thinking for a unity for the world. And so there's, there's a whole other abstract view to that that can make art great as a songwriter and writers probably. Like I just think of the writers in Hollywood right now, they're all in their houses developing these beautiful stories because they have to, because if we don't, then we're just going to go crazy. So it's just really kind of like a good time to, to open the windows and listen to the birds instead of trying to like think of where we're going to go. Cause honestly, I don't know really where we're going to go, but I think it's going to be beautiful with time. And that's what I've been learning. You know, I, I traveled to New York right before this thing happened. And I met, um, I met someone that's a casting director and she's, she got Corona. And so it was just kind of like one of these things where it was just named after a beer and we're having dinner and I'm talking about like being in New York and dreaming big. And then all of a sudden something so invisible just happens to, and it's just, I just, to me, New York city is shut down. The world is shut down and it's just an eerie sight. You know, I don't really watch the, the, the news, but I just think about how everybody um, is just at home and, that thought in itself makes me so happy for some reason. It's like Christmas is every day, kind of, but that can also be psychologically crazy. <laughs> well, it's like, you, I think our, 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 it's natural for our minds to go there. Like I was telling mm-hmm. somebody else the other day on the interview, I was like, I'm kind of still in denial that we're here, that this is what we're doing. And like, mm-hmm. I think that's normal. That's your coping mechanism. And you know, I think I see, I'm seeing a lot lately too, like that, those feelings that aren't, aren't so great, like feeling sad, feeling down, like we're allowed to express those as, as well and, you know, meet those there for what they are. So, yeah. But on the upside of it, it's, it's this incredible sadness is met with how people are, there's so much love from far away and like us staying home is helping someone mm-hmm. by not dying. I mean, that thought in itself, you know, is great. So um, just the power of connection and our disconnection. And I think, um, 
that can really shut someone on for a new life when, when it's over. Um, that's what my wish is anyway. You know, as, as a creator and an artist, I'm so proud of the artists that I see taking this time and helping um, people that need it. This is the time to do so. And it's not just about, you know, being a pop star anymore. It's about, you know, it's always been about that. And I kind of feel like we've gotten, I've gotten lost in just how many followers do I have? Do I have that blue check mark? It's not really about the blue check mark. It's about what we can do in our community and how we can help and, ha and you know, cause awareness where, it, where people don't really know. I mean, I need, I need awareness all the time. I need someone telling me, hey, girl, you got some lipstick on your teeth or hey girl you got to stop going to the grocery store we all need each other people need people but we also need to stay away from each other but people it's just it's showing me that we all need each other it's so we we need we need people you have a handful of projects that you've been working on um one of them the classic series that you unveiled in palm springs and tributes those legends that um, have inspired you over the years. And so I want to know a little bit about that and uh, what, what, it, what led you to create the classic series. I am so honored to, to have met these incredible uh, people that live in Palm Springs. It's a community of people that have just like taken me under their, their wing and, um, and they've just been kind of collaborating with me and my dreaming of like how I can dream bigger and how I can plant seeds because you know, sometimes you just need to sing a new song instead of write. You're, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a writer and I'm always writing songs, but I just, the thing that I've been noticing about me is that I always sing Send in the Clowns. Like that's when I'm doing laundry, I'm always, or doing the dishes, I'm always singing some sort of Frank Sinatra song or like some for, like sort of Patsy Cline song. So I'm like, well, here I am trying to write a new song. Why don't I just in, reinterpret these beautiful songs that I sing while I do my dishes? And, um, when I sang in Palm Springs, it was during the Christmas tree lighting, the lights went out in Palm Springs. And literally when I was singing the song, smile when your heart is aching, you know that song, the lights went out and we did not stop singing and performing. And it was uh, me, and, uh, me and Demarcus Johnson were on stage. And it just was, we, we met a slew full of people that um, are gonna be forever our friends and, and so then I started singing at the Riviera and um, then a new seed was planted. So hopefully that will continue. And I got a new website up. So um, if anybody wants to go look at Emily West official, I have a new face and I'm really excited about uh, the master classic series. Yeah. Uh, this age in music, Patsy Cline, Frank Sinatra, um, whoever it may be, what about their persona and their craft are you wanting to capture? in this series? Um, Cause I feel like for me, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of things, Frank Sinatra lately, and that's been helping me kind of take my mind off, you know, the things that have, that have been going on, but what about their craft and their brand are you trying to um, emote in your own way? That's a great question. Um, I think that Frank has this incredible gift. I think when you're, when you're born with the gift of just sonically understanding how to, make your voice sound a certain way. And then just having the gift of instructing the musicians the way Frank did. He measured sound and mood so well. And the space of that time, the way that they held out a note, it's not really done in, in today's music. It's very, you know, we live in a seven second world where you have to, and I just think that when you do beautiful things in a spacious way, it can really make sound change. And that's one thing I'm trying to pay attention to in my music is, is understanding that the space and sound is just as important as the beats. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that the swelling of the symphonic thing that the, back in those times, they really honored just having three lines be a huge chorus. And that was like mozzarella, tomatoes, and basil. That's what makes a caprese salad. And, you know, simple is, is best. You don't really need a lot. So. And um, what's your favorite song so far that you've sang for this series? I got to know. Because I feel like you could probably sing them all. But what's been your well, favorite? Right, right now, it's, it's an original. And I might sound, you know, like one of those artists that was one of the songs I wrote. But I'll, I'll be that. Because it's, 
I wrote it a long time ago with Kevin Rhodes and it's a song called Rainbow. And it's very much like a Judy Garland. It's the new song. No one will ever write somewhere over the rainbow again, but it is, it's a song called Rainbow. And, um, and it's just a beautiful song right now that uh, Palm Springs, my, my, my friends, Chris and Joel did a video for Palm Springs hospitals and honoring the nurses and the healthcare that have helped in this incredible weird time. And they're basically saving lives and, and a lot of them are dying and they put that song on underneath the, the news and made it really hopeful. And everybody was clapping um, in Paris and New York. And anyway, it's just kind of a, a song that un unifies this time. And, you know, songs, sometimes they, they come back and they go, who is that writing it? And it turns out to be me. So that's my favorite song. I want to talk about America's Got Talent for a second. Okay. Yes. And so we've been talking about creativity, like during the times that we're in, just normally creating the things that we love. But what mm -hmm. was it like? What was it like creating in a competitive sense? Um, what was it like getting the chance to sing with Cindy Lauper and that whole experience? Like, what did that? What did that teach you? Well, it taught me that you know teams are important, and that there are crews that want to help you really you know, box in your brand and really understand what your dream is. And so I was so grateful to work with such a great uh, crew because I was such an independent artist for quite some time. I was really thinking um, on the on, on top of the beat in my own way. And then I moved to New York and then, you know, I had to, you know, kind of open myself up to work with a team, which by the way, was incredible. And they made me look really, really good. Um, in the, being in, in competition, I don't really, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it was a competition, but it was more so like, I'm a singer and you're a, you're a magician. What is the competition? I didn't understand that, but I was happy to be on national TV, um, the runner up to say the least. Cause you know, I got to sing with my hero, Cindy Lauper, who is doing incredible things in the world. And, um, helping children and obviously bringing hope and joy to a lot of people in this time. So, um, yeah. Okay. So speaking of Cindy Lauper, I have people have to know you have um, a song out called true colors that you covered with her. Yes. Yeah. I, um, recorded that on my record off for you, which was at target. You can imagine I was, stunned when I was rolling down the aisles of Target and I see my face right next to all the other incredible artists. But yeah, I, I cut that and she got to sing when well, she was singing on it with me. She got to sing with me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Cindy. I got to sing with you. Well, hey, I just got to say before we get to your quarantine karaoke session, which yes. you can see um, additional clips of that on your Instagram. It's really great. There's strobe lights and your fancy mic. Um, all of it. I've loved just watching your success, your success and your ability to just thrive in these different projects and collaborate with all of these amazing people. I just, I don't know. I think you're so good at what you do and you have a beautiful voice and I just hope that this time helps you even thrive more. Thank you so much, Libby. I love what you're doing. I love that you're raising us up and making us look so great. You know, well, it's cause you are, <laughs> I am, we are, we are great. I could while away the hours Conferring with the flowers Consulting with the rain With the thoughts I'd be thinking I could be another Lincoln If I only had a brain I'd unrattle every riddle for any individual in trouble or in pain. With the thoughts I'd be thinking I could be another Lincoln if I only had a brain. Oh, I would tell you why the ocean 
oceans near the shore I think of things I never thunk before and then I'd sit and I'd think some more I would not be just a nothing my head all full of stuff and my heart all full of pain with the thoughts and I dance and be merry life would be a ding it dairy if I only had a brain if I only had a Grocery stores um, are shutting down. Lists are very important. You should not be bringing your iPhone into the grocery store, so I prefer paper. However, I'd like to wash my hands after touching that. Smile though your heart is aching. Smile even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your tears and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow you'll find the life is still worthwhile if you just smile i'm so happy that we got to experience this time to get together Bless you, Stella. It's not Corona. It's just allergies. Have you seen my new coffee mug, uh, my Bette Midler mug? This is what Victoria Shaw got me just in the mail. She just, my little angel, Victoria Shaw. Is this something that you got during quarantine or is this like, do you have this? This is, this is pre-quarantine. This is just her being kind and sending me Bette Midler mugs from New York City. It's really ocean.